What's going on, guys? It is Brian and Jack with Superman's Comics, and boy, do we have a video for you. Recently, the news just came out. Boom has signed a first look deal with Netflix. Now, what does that mean? That means that Netflix gets the right first look to option their properties. So there's creator-owned properties, whether it's animated or live action, and we're also going to have 10 books that we like that we want to see on Netflix, but it's also important to know what is encompassed in this deal and what isn't. There's a lot of confusion out there. A lot of people want to see some of these boom books on Netflix, but it's just not going to happen, is it, Jack? No. I mean, there's a couple factors to, to, to discuss when talking about this deal. Um, as you mentioned, you're talking about a multi-year agreement, uh, first look for both live action and animated, but it excludes a few things. And, and one of the things that it kind of was tying up this whole thing is the fact that this is not the first first look deal for Boom Studios. They previously had one with 20th Century Fox, which then that got acquired by Disney. And if you remember, there was a lot of talk during that whole period about some properties like Lumberjanes and Mouse Guard, which were supposed to be in development. And we have since learned that Disney is not moving forward with those properties. It looks like they are moving forward with the Boom Studios property, The Empty Man. So that would not be included in this Netflix deal. And it's imp also important to know that that Disney deal doesn't expire until January of 2021. So some things could happen with Disney there, but it doesn't really seem like they want to be a part of uh, doing another comic book company's uh, kind of universe when they've already got the Marvel universe right at their disposal. But that's not it because we also know, Brian, that Boom Studios is popular for their licensed property comics. That's right. Such series as Buffy the Vampire Slayer or Firefly, those Joss Whedon type series, those are owned by 20th Century Fox, which in turn now is owned by Disney. So that's not going to be a Boom type story. Right, you're not gonna you're not gonna see uh, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, which is owned by Hasbro, which is already working to develop a shared universe with GI Joe and Transformers, um, and that's the vehicle you'll see for Power Rangers. Yeah, and that's Power through Paramount. Right, through Paramount uh, Pictures, and and we also know that. Power Rangers has a separate television deal through Nickelodeon, um, and Nickelodeon distributes through Netflix, but that has nothing to do with Boom Studios. So you won't see this deal affect any of those titles. And there's been a lot of that information spread, but that's why we came to bring you this kind of top 10 books to be on the lookout for that really will apply to this boom and Netflix deal. So we're going to give you top 10 starting right now, counting down from number 10. We get that one that we know has option news. It's had some option news and we're talking about the unsound. Right, this is kind of cheating, Brian. This is already in development, a feature film uh, from Cullen Bunn at Boom Studios in Netflix. But the reason why I wanted to start off the list with this book is I believe, and this is through no actual factual information. This is, could be the Boom's Iron Man, right? <laughs> this is, yeah, this is my really truly speculation on, on my point that I think this is the book that ushered in this relationship. This is the book that got Boom Studios CEO, Ross Ritchie working with Netflix, and I really think that that relationship ended up fostering what we're getting going forward with this future boom and Netflix deal that I'm very excited about and I think is going to get a lot of great creator-owned properties on screen. But I think that this being the first one, they're definitely going to make sure they get it right. It's a feature film. It's horror. You know how Colin Bunn does horror. We've already seen this book pop on the secondary market. It's kind of taken a drop back. Be on the lookout for that Comic Mint store variant. No, nope, there's only 500 of. I know a lot of people don't love store variants, but a little bit of game. When you're talking about limited independent comics, store variants can be king. And we're going to talk about uh, a big one when we come up to like number one. But coming in at our number nine spot, this is another one that we were really high on, and it's Folklords. This is a great one. This is perfect for Netflix. It's got that whole fantasy, that teen teen drama, which is gonna find you're gonna find fits a lot of boom books, even ones that aren't on our top ten. But either way, I love this story, and hopefully, really want to see this be one of the ones that show up on Netflix. Well, this is where I think that this dynamic deal is going to really play into the advantage of Boom Studios because you're going to see this list have a little bit of everything. And this deal with Netflix allows for both animated and live action. Folklords honestly could be both. I could see this being Harry Potter or Lord of the Rings style live action, but I could also see it being an amazing animated show on Netflix. And honestly, I'd be on board for either one. 
And this is a, a book, obviously, we were excited about. We talked about it before it came out. And if you haven't gotten a chance to add folklore to your collection, this is a great opportunity. It's already spiking on the secondary market. But you know what, Brian? We've got them covered because we're going to do a giveaway. You're going to see, you got 10 books on this list. You're going to see what we think. But just like we did on our trade paper bag video, if you haven't seen that, go check that out. It's on the channel. We're looking for your opinion. What book from Boom Studios are you excited to see possibly get adapted by Netflix? And put your comment in. We're going to choose one. And we are going to be giving away a CBSI, comicbookinvest.com, Folklord's number one exclusive variant. These are numbered. Brian and I, this was our last variant we worked on before we left comicbookinvest.com. And we're going to give away one to one viewer this week. I can sit there and say this about every book on this list just because we, no doubt, no hiding it, we champion boom on this on this channel all the time. So we're more excited to talk about these books. Yes. And we're talking about Red Mother. This is one of those books that when we first read it, we were like, holy cow, this is, this came in after what we had, uh, Once in Future, Something's Killing the Children, and then they hit us with Red Mother. It was like back to back to back, crazy stories, fun, I say fun stories, it's not really a fun story, but this some great nonetheless so as you know brian when we were going through this like run of boom studios books that were really killing it in 2019 this is actually the book while slept on largely in the secondary market i think largely due to the kind of boom fatigue of the success of those successive releases this was my favorite i read this book and instantly said man this is a horror movie it's very hard to literally scare you from a comic book you're because you're not it's harder to suspend reality obviously. especially since you can see panels ahead or yeah i'm still even sitting, though you're not trying to right i'm still sitting in my living room it's 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 you're not looking at a screen it's a little bit different on the page it's a different feeling but that book legitimately was scary um and i loved when you kind of flip to that last page of that first issue i felt like i could visualize it cinematically and immediately I got excited about this. So one of the things that I've already mentioned that I really like about this list is you see the diversity of titles, but with the unsound coming, and I think the success that it is going to have bringing kind of like this Boom Studios horror project, I really think that Red Mother would be a great follow-up. And it's like many books on this list. There's no rumor uh, about this book. This is just a book that we really like and kind of our belief is, yes, there is a great back catalog of Boom Studios books, but, you know, Disney's had a look at those. A lot of people have had a look at those, including Netflix over time. I think that those recent releases that really put Boom on the map are ones to really pay attention to. Right, and you mentioned how the book scared you. I kind of related this to that feeling was when the first time I read Nailbiter from Image is kind of oh, related yeah. to this. Yeah, so definitely similar tone. Next on the countdown, if you're a fan of Matt Kent, this is one book that you'll like, especially with that whole kind of reminds you of if you're ever in Boy Scouts, Cub Scouts, this is the book for you. And we're talking about Black Badge. Yes. And this is the thing where you're going to see on this list, you may be saying, where's Grass Kings? Well, again, Grass Kings already option. It's not one of the books that we're going to be talking about. But if you like Grass Kings, like I did, that was one of my favorite independent books coming out of Boom Studios in the last few years, um, then this is a book for you because it, it brings both the writer Matt Kent and the artist Tyler Jenkins together. And this is a story that is made for Netflix because we're talking about, you mentioned Boy Scouts, you're talking about this kind of young coming of age type story that we have seen Netflix be dominant with and they've been looking for that next stranger things right and i think that boom studios is a great great publisher that has a lot of those type of stories that's going to really really be attractive to netflix because again that's the beauty of this type of deal we're not just talking about like a superhero universe they're going to be able to use horror they're going to be able to do children's stuff and young adult and um urban and a little, something for everybody and that's what's great about this type of deal yeah, and then spoiler alert, because I'm telling you about this right now because it's not on the list. I see it being a toss up between whether they want to do Black Badge, talking about that Stranger Things type thing, whether Black Badge, or they might look at that even newer release of Alienated. I think both of those kind of fit in that demo. So we'll wait and see. Or that's oh, the beauty I mean, of this. We don't know. So 
whatever it is, I'm sure everyone's going to be like, oh, wow. But wait and see. Then the next one on our list, we are combining horror, supernatural with drugs and the mob. And we are talking about Louisiana. We are talking about Bone Parish. Another Cullen Bun, right? Yes, another Cullen Bun, um, kind of horror, but with a little more kind of supernatural crime noir uh, suspense in there. It's, it, this is a great one. This is one we've talked about. I mentioned that trade paperback video. Definitely check that out. We've got a giveaway for the trade signed by Cullen Bun up on the channel this week. Uh, and this is a great story. Both Brian and I liked it. It was one we talked about on the Bolo show. The Bolo listeners demanded that we read this book. Um, so this was one that we jumped on and, and really... Colin Bunn is as consistent as it comes with horror. And it's also a good bet for this deal. If the unsound turns out well, why wouldn't Netflix go back to that well again and say, you know what, I want another story from that guy. Right. So again, we'll put a link in the description of this video for that trade paperback. You go over there and get that giveaway. And we'll also put a card up here right now that'll come across the screen if you're watching this online. But moving into the next one on the list, we are talking about Coda. Now, a lot of times sitting here and say, man, this is a great story. This is a great story. This was one of the ones that I liked it, but I wasn't wowed by it. But I see why you have it on this list at the same time. Well, I'll tell you, Brian, here's the real reason why it's on the list. We have hit the point in the list where I think it's important to note that these first five books are the five books I feel the strongest about. And I think there's a real separation between these books and any other book on the list because these five books were named in the many to most of the articles announcing this deal. And when you start to see the same kind of verbiage come up uh, in article after article after article from major news sources. <laughs> the names are coming from somewhere. Mind. Right. They're coming from somewhere. So whether that's Boom's PR department, whether that's Netflix's PR department. Or everyone just plagiarized after the first person. <laughs> right. I don't where, think that's the case, but. No, no, because when you start to see these names, it really starts to make sense um, why they would be the ones to pay attention to. Now, Coda is kind of the dark horse of it. And the other funny thing is when you look at the secondary market, people have started to pick up on the same thing I picked up. So Coda is moving. It's not necessarily going for a lot of money, but copies are moving on the secondary market. Most of these newer books, the most successful way they're selling, which I kind of love and I know you'll love, is they're, is they're selling in sets. Um, issue number one of a lot of these books may only be a cover price book, but if you start to look at like issue one through five, they start to go up in price for the average. So um, that's something we talk about on a regular basis but coda was mentioned in almost every single article that i read and that got my attention because i'll say of the five it was the least likely that i would have guessed to be there then this next one on the list this is one of my favorite books this is the one of the ones that i think a lot of readers probably aren't into but you know i'm kind of a disney fan and this kind of fits in that realm we talk about all ages books we talked about other independent books that kind of span across different demographics i think this is definitely one of them and we're talking about that mouse guard book this is the one that when we were talking about earlier with disney i could have definitely seen it being on disney but either way i'd love to see this especially as like an animated feature animated series showing up on netflix and it's one of those ones that's good for kids good for adults good for teens good for everything it's just one of those great stories yes and mouse guard was previously optioned as part of the first look deal with 20th century fox they were going to do an animated feature with it once the deal got picked up by Disney, rumors are that Disney felt like it, the, it was too close to their most important piece of IP, that being, of course, Mickey Mouse. And they didn't want to kind of confuse with multiple mice because either way, even though it was a totally separate thing, apparently, you know, for marketing purposes, that's how they felt. They passed on it. So now it's back available. We, we know that this is one of the most acclaimed reader series there is. David Peterson, the creator, the uh, writer and artist, he is amazing. If you get a chance to meet him at conventions, he's one of the nicest people. Um, he, will, he will draw sketches for you for free if you bring up Mouse Guard books. Uh, also, there's some serious heat on the back issue market for that very first Mouse Guard book. Mouse Guard number one is about a two hundred dollar back issue these are the weirdest sized comics you'll ever see they're wide they're short it's it's odd it's like a, it's like a, yeah. you can't find it's like a children's book you can't yeah. find proper um uh 
bags and boards. He's released two hardcovers for free comic book day that became like the most popular free comic book day books of that year. And were being flipped for like 10 to $15. Uh, it, this property has been popular from its inception. It's kind of like a slam dunk. So we are now down into our top three and these are bangers I'm telling you and the first one we're talking about is one we've championed on this channel for a while it's a newer release came out last year we had Arun Singh the VP of marketing on this channel talking about this book we couldn't wait to get it and it did not disappoint and we are talking about once in future Jack yeah absolutely um this book has been the book that really kind of kick-started boom studios ascent in 2019 and this is another book named in every single press release that i have seen uh there's no doubt that this is going to be one of the titles that i think is going to be majorly talked about there was a major overship as part of the boom guarantee program of the first print so because of that that first print is readily available for cover price all over the internet i think it's an amazing buy i would also be on the lookout for that one per store variant from Dan Mora. I would be on the lookout for those extremely low printed late printings of number one and all of the early issues because again, the sets of these are selling extremely well. There were late prints of, I think, issues like two through six. Uh, and this series has incredible momentum. And it, we know that it's, it's an ongoing now. It's no longer a mini. And that's only going to give more IP, more resources for Netflix to use. And I got to imagine we're going to see this book announced. I just got a strong feeling about this one. The number two spot right after once in future boom came and hit us upside the head with another great story. We're talking about James Tinian's something is killing the children, right? We're not going to be talking about the woods. Cause again, already options won't be part of this deal. The Woods is one of my favorite books. And I think that everything James Tinian is going to be hot right now with what he's got going on with Batman and punchline. But this book has quite possibly, I'm going to go out on a limb and say, the best character in independent comics right now. Erica Slaughter is cool as hell. If she was a Marvel or a DC character, we'd be seeing- Yeah, cosplay all over the place. We'd be seeing punchline like heat for her first appearance. And that first appearance coming in that issue number one, what is better than that Jenny Frizen variant? That cover is amazing. I really think so many of these covers of these early issues where something's killing the children are going to be hot. This book, this character, I, you got to think about some of the stuff. Again, we talked about coming from different perspectives with Netflix. Netflix is for everybody. Everybody watches Netflix from your grandma to your, to, to your children. This is going to be that badass chick. Especially when you got the every everyday person watching it and then you get the opening credits and it says adapted by, you know, whatever, and some, such and such comic book or whatever. Right. How many other people are going to go from that over to reading these books? You're going to love this book, but I tell you what, when this ends up on Netflix, your wife, your girlfriend is going to love it because she's going to love to see this girl kicking ass the way she does in this book. <laughs> yeah, definitely. And coming in at the number one spot this is another older release this is yeah. one that was optioned before within that fox deal but we are talking about lumberjanes lumberjanes number one this is kind of one of the ones that i won't say put boom on the map because boom always had some great stories but this is one of the one that people started taking notice of boom they're like what's this lumberjanes thing but either way it's basically like some kick-ass girl scouts right and it's important to note that boom studios has a few other imprints they've got um Kaboom, they've got uh, Boombox, and they all tell like different types of stories. So this is kind of like that young adult uh, kind of oriented story. And this book took off from the moment it was released, one of the hottest independent comics. I think most people in comics know about this book. Uh, issue number one, major back issue. Um, yeah, it's like a $50 cover A right now still. Right, extremely, extremely rare variants. Um, it's yeah. extremely tough to find ones. Yeah, they got that web exclusive that was limited to 250 issues, white cover, doodles on it. It was like 250 issues, $30 on Boom's website. I bought it. So full, full disclosure, I sold it when the last option news came out. But either way, it's still hard to find. Find the 9.8 on there. You will hardly ever see it. Every now and then, I think there might be a 9.6 on eBay right now. Right, and, it, and it's great that you noted the past option news because, again, this was optioned by 20th Century Fox. It was oh, These books were only released by Disney two weeks ago. Only two weeks ago did we get information that they were passing on both Mouse Guard and Lumberjanes. Um, and 
So now these are back in play. The fact that they were this again, it, you mentioned this is kind of like almost a flagship book for Boom, uh, kind of a book that early on got them market attention as a creator-owned uh, um, vehicle in the within the e comics community. This book to me is a no-brainer, and it, this is a book actually that could play on multiple levels because again. They, apparently they were going to do something live action and then there was talk about a, animated. A, a animated they can go both with netflix and there were so many spin-offs with lumberjanes and things like that where they they have Gotham almost, academy like, crossover right, they have almost a universe so they 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 can do a lot that can be a brand that can be very valuable. you could even do a lumberjanes black badge crossover if you kind of wanted to <laughs> really really could you really could they could build they could, there's a few books where if you got really creative, you could create a Boom Studios shared universe. Yeah. So th that's the point. That's why this is our list of 10. There's several others. We're going to hit you with honorable mentions because there's several others that you could make an argument about. We want to hear what you guys think, but that's the great thing about this deal. And there's so many options because a publisher like Boom Studios, they've got a little bit of a flavor for everybody, no matter what your age group, demographic, gender, race. They've got something for you, no matter what type of story you like to read. They've got something for you. Yeah, so we're going to have some... Honorable mentions, we're going to put the covers of those up on the screen here in just a minute. There's one book, actually two books on this list that I kind of am high on, hopefully seen in Netflix. If you're a fan of, say, Sons of Anarchy, Boom did Sons of Anarchy, you're not going to see that because it's already been there and it's Fox property. But that show creator, Kurt Sutter, has done some other books with Boom. We're talking about like Lucas Stan and Sisters of Sorrow. Those are two ones that I think would be fantastic as well. But we'll have to wait and see. I understand why the list is the list it is. So we're going to show those honorable mentions up on the screen right now. And before you go, make sure you click that subscribe button so you get notified of future videos. And comment. Let us know what you would like to see from Boom on Netflix for an opportunity to win that Folklords variant, right? Absolutely. With that being said, this is Jack and Brian from Simple Man's Comics. See you guys in the next video. <laughs>